AEW has dropped a huge hint that MJF could be gone from the company. Plus, we're going to talk about that TV deal. It sounds like they could potentially be losing their relationship with Warner. Don't forget, I'm giving away this championship belt at 100,000 subscribers. So go ahead and click subscribe today. Welcome back to The Angle Show. I want to kick things off with some WWE news. LA Knight topping off the list in October as WWE's number one merchandise seller. Uh, according to Brandon Thurston of WrestleNomics, he put together a list of the top merchandise sellers. And of course, LA Knight was number one on the list. Uh, actually, what's really interesting is LA Knight was number one. Number two was John Cena. Number three was Cody Rhodes. Number four was Stone Cold Steve Austin. Number five was Jay Uso, which is actually really interesting to me. Uh, Roman Reigns at number six, Rhea Ripley at seven, NWO at number eight, Eddie Guerrero at number nine, and number 10, Scott Hall. Um, I actually thought something, uh, I thought this was very interesting on Twitter. Uh, Wrestling Wind Down uh, at WW, WWD Cast actually spoke about how, uh, you know, it would be nice to see a women's wrestler among the top merch sellers. Um, and then, she actually mentioned something really cool. She says, the first woman that comes to mind um, is Tiffany Stratton. The fact that she used the Barbie-themed font vibe in her entrances around the same time the Barbie movie dropped uh, and there was no mer merch centered around that was a fumble. Um, and basically, this is in regards to like WWE not taking advantage of merchandise uh, for their women's roster. And honestly, I think you could even say that they're not taking advantage of it for their entire roster. You know, unfortunately, Scott Hall is no longer with us. Eddie Guerrero is no longer with us. Um, NWO is non-existent in 2023. Uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin is not an active competitor. Um, I think WWE is kind of fumbling the bag with merchandise, honestly. And, and I hate to say this, but I think like wrestling in general, they don't really do wrestling merch that well anymore. Um, I, I would probably wear more wrestling merch if it looked like it was something that was wearable. And then when she mentions the Tiffany Stratton thing, like that immediately makes me think, yeah, they're fumbling the bag. How do they not see the opportunities for better merch or even more merch in general for their stars? Um, shout out to LA Knight, obviously top guy in the company. Clearly he's selling the most merch, John Cena and Cody, not far behind, but there there's. There is a lot of room for improvement here, and I'll just leave it at that. I want to talk to you guys about Crown Jewel. It sounds like WWE has canceled the pre and post show for the WWE press conferences. BWE confirmed on X that uh, WWE will not be holding any press conference events in Saudi Arabia at this time. Uh, something that apparently has to do with the location of it. I don't know why WWE would cancel it. I mean, look. Pre and post show conferences are great. At the very least, doing a post show press conference would be very, very good idea for WWE. The, the overall feeling towards these press conferences, at least on my perspective, is that they're really good. I don't think the questions that are being asked are great, but I think that the idea of doing them is great. I think it opens up another level of personalization, you know, especially from like Paul Levesque, right? When you see Triple H do these press conferences and he's talking about certain things and talking about the stories and talking about developments of the business and stuff like that, I always enjoy hearing that perspective. I also enjoy when press conferences are kind of used to push along storylines. Um, which we have seen before with AEW press conferences. The idea that WWE is going to cancel it in Saudi Arabia, I'm almost getting the feeling that maybe WWE in this case just doesn't consistently do them for whatever reason, and that's it, right? I don't think it's that hard to do a press conference. You could go into any room, put up the, the background banner, put up a table, that type of thing. Um, WWE is kind of all over the place with the press conferences, honestly. I think that's another thing that I'm starting to realize with WWE is it's not supposed to happen for the B rated pay-per-views, only the big four, but then WWE continues to do them anyways for the B rated pay-per-views. Uh, nonetheless, I like the press conferences. I want to see them full time. Kind of sucks that it's being canceled. WWE is also facing some concerns with the weather in Saudi Arabia. So maybe that has something to do with it too. Not too sure, but we'll see what happens. I want to turn our attention to the AEW Warner Brothers TV deal. Sean Ross Sapp, Fightful Select. Very, very, very interesting report. And I really want to talk about this because if you guys watch my channel, you know I talk about TV deals a lot and I love it. It's a very fun part of the business. 
Um, but according to Fightful Select, the two sides, AEW and Warner Bros. Discovery, have failed to reach an agreement on a new deal. Um, basically, Warner Bros. Discovery sources told Fightful that moves made by NBC Universal could affect things. With the media conglomerate recently winning the rights to the show SmackDown, NBCU and USA are also to be believed to be in the running to bid on the NBA broadcasting rights, which is obviously a staple of Warner Brother Discovery's TNT for years. If TNT were somehow to lose NBA coverage, then their budget would be affected with AEW Rampage currently part of the network's lineup. As uh, as of several weeks ago, talks between AEW and WBD had failed to reach an agreement with the TV, pay-per-view, and AEW media library believed to be on the table. Feifel's report indicated that Tony Khan has a particular value in mind when it comes to the media library. Wow. Uh, no, th- I mean, this is exactly what I've been saying for months now with the NBA stuff. I, I don't think you're going to see anything in regards to Raw, NXT, or AEW until the NBA rights are cleared off. Because I think, I think NBC universal, if they can't land NBA, they want WWE raw. They want NXT. They want all three shows. They want all of WWE shows, but the NBA TV rights are going to cost a crazy amount of money. Literally. There is no, it's no exaggeration. It is going to cost a shit ton of money. And so for AEW, Tony Khan obviously has a number in his mind. Warner Brothers at this time probably can't afford it until they know what's going on with the NBA rights. Now, if they lose the NBA rights, obviously that changes things for AEW. The fact that they haven't been able to come to a new agreement. And actually, I'll say this. If you look at AEW and WWE, when the other TV rights deals were like announced, they were pretty far in advance. This time, it doesn't seem to be the case. I think WWE overestimated how quick they could get a TV deal for Raw and NXT. And I think AEW, everybody believed it was a sure thing that they were going to re-sign with Warner Bros. Discovery. They do have a fantastic relationship. The problem is their relationship does not triumph whatever relationship the NBA has. And, and then you got to factor in t- uh, Amazon and Apple also wanting NBA rights. There's a lot of people who are coming for those rights. They want the TV rights for the NBA, and it could change the landscape of how people watch basketball. And therefore, that's the reason why AEW is not signing any new, new TV deal. I think there is nothing confirmed at this point that AEW and Warner Bros. Discovery are sticking together. And that's the crazy part, because I think we all believed it could very well be the case. However, if the NBA rights go 50, 60 billion dollars, whatever, I don't know if AEW is going to get the bag with Warner Bros. Discovery. And that brings us to our final topic of today's video, guys. MJF, AEW had a huge important announcement last night on Dynamite, and all it was is that you can go and do the pre-sale for all in 2024. I talk more about this in depth and why I think it's hurting the company, um, and that's going to be on more angles, so make sure you guys check that out. But I do want to put this out there. AEW launches a press release and they drop some graphics online and MJF is not part of that. AEW has made it very clear that MJF is not being advertised for all in 2024. Now, Tony Khan is a pretty smart individual and they're obviously going to try and use this MJF situation as a way to get people to watch the product because this is what Tony Khan does. Um, And it's obviously a fair play to them. Now, with that being said, I told you guys for a while, I don't believe he's a free agent. Maybe I'm wrong. I was wrong about the CM Punk AEW stuff being a work, right? That's okay, because I'm not reporting anything on that. I'm just merely speculating based on my perspective. Um, But I don't believe that MJF is a legitimate free agent. I don't. Maybe I'm wrong. Hopefully I am wrong. But I will leave you guys with this. He is not being advertised for all in 2024. That's the only part that makes me think it's not a work because it would be pretty f-ing stupid, by the way, to not tell people that your world champion is going to be there knowing damn well he's going to be there. So perhaps he actually is a free agent. And let's say he is, in fact, a free agent, right? If he is, in fact, a free agent and you're, and you're not advertising him, you got to re-sign him. If MJF leaves AEW, that will absolutely hurt AEW. You know how I know? Because Adam Copeland came into AEW 
Ric Flair came into AEW. All of these other individuals, big names, have come into AEW, and nothing has changed for the company. So if AEW loses their biggest homegrown star to the WWE, I can certainly tell you right off the rip, it will absolutely hurt AEW. They will lose their trust with the audience, and they will lose their fan base. And therefore, I really hope they're not working people. I really hope that like they come to a conclusion and actually have MJF on their roster because I don't want them to lose one of the biggest pieces to their show. With that being said, let me know what you guys think. Don't forget, I'm giving away this championship belt at 100,000 subscribers.